Namaskar and welcome Network Analysis and in the previous lecture we have already drawn a network or pod chart for this data and now we are going to start a new topic earliest start and earliest finish of each and every activity and to determine the earliest start time and earliest finish time of the activities we are going to follow the forward pass method forward pass method means we shall go or our journey will be from start to finish of the project yes from left to right and the time of start event is always taken as zero at zero point of time the project starts so for all the three initial or start activities the start time should be taken as zero we are going to write start earliest start time and earliest finish time besides the title and duration of the activity that will be our writing style at present in future if needed we shall change our style yes and as i have stated recently the start earliest start time of initial activities is always zero yes zero now what is the earliest finish time earliest start time of the activity plus duration of the activity earliest start time of the activity plus duration of the activity the result is earliest finish time at what time at the earliest the activity can be finished okay it is very obvious or it is natural add the duration to the start time the result will be finish time so if we add the duration of the activity to the earliest start time of the activity the result will be earliest finish time okay so for a it will be 0 plus 2 2 for b it will be 0 plus 7 7 and for c it will be 0 plus 8 8 that means after starting the project after two days a will be finished after seven days b will be finished after eight days c will be finished these are the earliest finish time of these three activities okay now what about successors if any activity has only one predecessor there is no problem just take d d has only one predecessor a so it is very clear that only after finishing a we can start d only a nothing else now the earliest finish time of a is 2 that means this 2 itself becomes the earliest start time of D. Because to start D, we have to wait only to finish A. Not any other activity. So D start is dependent only on A's finish. Yes? So, earliest finish time of A becomes earliest start time of D. So, if there is only one predecessor, the earliest start time of an activity is the earliest finish time of the predecessor activity. Yes? Okay. So, earliest start of D will be 2. Yeah. And again, earliest start plus duration, that means earliest finish time. So it will be 5, 2 plus 3, 5 in case of D. Now, in case of B, there are three successors. There is no problem. Because all the three activities, E, F and G, only one predecessor is there. So there will be no confusion. As far as any activity has only one predecessor, there is no question of confusion. In case of E, the predecessor is B only. So E's earliest start time is 
the earliest finish time of B. 7. After completing C on the 7th day, we can start E. That is the interpretation. Okay? Yes. Now, earliest finish time is nothing. Earliest start time plus duration. So, it will be 13 in case of E. In case of G also, the, there is single, only one predecessor. So, there is no confusion. We finish B on 7th day and then we can start G. So, for G also, earliest finish time of B becomes the earliest start time, that is 7. And earliest start time plus duration means the earliest finish time. In this square bracket, the first is earliest start time, the second is earliest finish time of the activity. Again, for F also, there is only one predecessor B, and when there is only one predecessor, the earliest finish time of the predecessor becomes the earliest start time of the successor. And earliest start time plus duration will be the earliest finish time. Yes, 7 plus 10. 17. In case of H also, there is only one predecessor, C. C ends on 8th day. Earliest finish time of C is 8. That becomes the earliest start time of H 8. And earliest start time plus duration means earliest finish time. Okay, now, in case of I, there are two predecessors. That means only after finishing D as well as E we can start I. Now what? If D and E cannot be finished on the same day. Yes, see. The earliest finish time of D is 5. Earliest finish time of E is 13. That means on 5th day, D is completed. But on 13th day, E is completed. And I can be started only after finishing D as well as E both. Now, that is matter of actually common sense. Just ask yourself one question. Can we start I on 5th day? Or immediately after 5th day? No. Why? Still... E, activity E is going on. E can be finished on 13th day. And before finishing E, we cannot start I. That means, now we have to make comparison. Predecessor, rather, earliest finish of predecessor, 5 and 13. After 5, we cannot start the activity because we have to wait till the 13th day. So we have made a rule. Earliest start time of an activity is the largest value of the earliest finish times of all the predecessor activities. Largest out of all predecessor. Largest earliest finish time out of all predecessor activities. Largest. 5 or 13. Largest is 13. We can say that. Compare the earliest finish times of all the predecessor activities and select the whichever is larger or higher. 5 and 13, whichever is higher, 13. So we can say that only on 13th day of the project, we can start I. <coughs> 13 plus 2, earliest finish time of I will be 15. Yes? Okay, now again in case of J as well as K also there are more than one predecessors. Let's take J. There are two predecessors F and H. In case of F, the earliest finish time is 17. In case of H, earliest finish time is 14. And as we recently discussed, whichever is higher. Okay, on 14th day H is finished, on 17th day F is finished, only after finishing H as well as F, we can start J, so we can start J only after 17th day or only on 17th day, that's the 
see that is not actually question of logic that is question of natural sequence or question of just common sense if we can start j after finishing h and f both then how can we start j after finishing h only we cannot so we have to wait till 17th day this is the matter 14 or 17 whichever is higher so in case of j the earliest start time will be 17 17 plus duration 5 earliest finish time of J will be 22 okay yeah now in case of K also there are two predecessors G and I G is finished on 11th day I is finished on 15th day again select whichever is higher obviously only after finishing G on 11th day, we cannot start K because to start K, we have to finish G and I both and I can be finished only on 15th day. So before 15th day, we cannot start K. That is the point or largest earliest finish times of all preceding or rather all predecessor activities is selected. So it will be 15 in case of K and duration of K is 6, 15 plus 6. The earliest finish time of K will be 21. But earliest finish time of J is 22. So before 22 days this project cannot be finished. That means earliest finish time of the project comes to 22. Yes, whichever is higher. That is the point. And in case of finish event, there can never be earliest start time. There can be only earliest finish time. In case of start, there can be only earliest start time. That is zero. And in case of finish, there can be earliest finish time. And that is the earliest finish time of the project itself. Yes. So we follow the forward pass method. This method is popularly known as forward pass. From start to finish, we go forward. Yes, and we determine earliest start time and earliest finish time of each activity. I hope you are able to understand everything.